the greatest benefit of a temple is to improve the life of those who go to the temple. And the Yerevan Temple, being a place of pilgrimage in the middle of the Pacific, is just that kind of a temple. It improves the life of those who go to it. And then one of the most significant happenings, other than the mystical vision that I had many, many years ago when we saw Lord Shiva walking in the valley, Lord Shiva's face and then sitting on a great stone, which gave the permission to build the Shiva Temple. Jai Ganesha. For the mystical Hindus of South India and Sri Lanka, the Hindu temple is not merely an architectural wonder or a sacred shrine. It is the very body of God, worshipful in its own right. It is not the home of God, it is God himself in the physical form. Such is the importance of the Erevan Siva temple in Hawaii. Aloha Nui, welcome to Kauai, Hawaii's garden island. Explore with us the story of a hidden gem on the edge of a mountainous wilderness. Gazing across the lush valley of the Wailua River and its Nani Kaua waterfall and pond, you see gold leaf domes of Indian design shimmering in the tropical sunlight. With majestic Mount Waialiali in the background, you are beholding the towers of Iraivan Temple, a pure and powerful white granite wonderment, carved in India by hand and erected 10,000 miles away on this tiny island paradise. Located within Kauai's Hindu monastery complex, reminiscent of ancient Adhinams of India, Iraivan was constructed first and foremost as a destination for devotees on annual pilgrimage, a place of spiritual rejuvenation. Sadhguru Sivaya Subramunya Swami, affectionately known as Guru Deva, the founder of Kauai's Hindu Monastery, explained, quote, In 1995, as I look into the future, I see Iravan as Mount Kailash, or the Amarnath Cave Ice Lingam, the silent citadel hidden within the rainforest on the furthest landmass from all continents. I see Yerevan as a yoga citadel, a place of pilgrimage for the devout, sincere, and dedicated. This is a place where you do not have to invoke God, for God is here, for this is where heaven meets the earth." Unquote. This temple was inspired by a series of mystical visions of Shiva that came to Gurudeva early in the morning of February 15, 1975, in which he saw Lord Shiva seated on a large boulder, which was later discovered on the property, which was overgrown at the time. These visions inspired him to begin this exquisite temple, unlike any in the world. Gurudeva exclaimed, Quote, the Saivite Hindu religion brings to us one of the greatest gifts, the working together of the three worlds, worlds within one another, where great intelligent beings live who have evolved through eons of time and are able to help mankind without themselves having to live in a physical body. These great Mahadevas with their multitudes of devas live and work constantly and tirelessly for the people of our religion, protecting and guiding them, opening doors and closing unused ones. The Hindu temple is the place to go to meet and contact the great overlords of our religion. They live there." Unquote. Saiva temples, whether they be small village sanctuaries or towering citadels thousands of years old, are like no other place on earth. Strict rules from the Agamas are followed to create spaces where holiness, God, can reside. 
Over decades of consistent worship, the power becomes strong, forming an invisible, bubble-like shield around the temple, which keeps out gross vibrations and allows the heaven worlds to be strongly present. As you approach God's home, you can feel the spiritual energy. And as you go inside, you are engulfed in peace. Here the devas and gods can easily hear your prayers. Here the ancient scriptures are chanted in Sanskrit by competent priests as they knowingly perform the traditional rites. Here joyous festivals are celebrated and arduous pilgrimages concluded. At the high point of the puja, as bells ring loudly and conches blow, the deity sends rays of blessings through the enshrined image, or murti, which is the god's physical plane form. Flooding your aura, this energy can erase worries, clear confusion, and relieve sadness. Devotees leaving the temple feel inspired, enlightened of their burdens. The Erevan Temple was designed by one of India's greatest temple architects, the late Ganapati Stavadi, who created drawings for the temple in the 1980s, basing his design strictly on a thousand-year-old Chola empire style. The singular deity of this temple is a magnificent, naturally formed crystal Sivalinga. In all Hindu temples in India and abroad, you will see the same square Garbhagriha with Sivalinga inside. It will be in black granite stone. But in this particular temple, the shaft of the Sivalinga is spatika or crystal. So this is sometimes called crystal temple. That crystal Sivalinga has got a very, very unique meaning. This particular Linga represents the Akasa, the space. And this Linga represents space is supported by the great Mayan, the legendary Mayan, who gave this kind of tradition into Indian hands very, very, very long ago, about 10,000 years before. He says, Saru Atmiyam, that which resides in our inner being, inner space, and Linga, they are nothing but space. So all the qualities of the space, all the qualities of our inner being, can be found embedded in this particular spatical linga. Crystals have long held a place of prominence in many cultures due to the special qualities they possess. In 1987, an extraordinary crystal would come to Gurudeva. This massive 700 pound, perfectly shaped crystal was like no other. Almost in all temples, we will be having a very small spatical linga for worship. But in this particular temple, this particular linga is about three feet size and the thickness will be or the width will be one foot. So such a huge spatikam, nowhere it exists, nowhere is found in Hindu temples or even outside for any other purpose. Hindu scriptures say that of all the icons permitted in the Siva temple, none is more profound than the Siva Linga or mark of Lord Shiva. For it represents the timeless, formless, spaceless, causeless, absolute reality that is the core of all existence. And of all the Sivalingas, the greatest is said to be the naturally formed crystal called Swayambhu Spataka in Sanskrit. Iraivan's 700 pound, 39 inch tall, perfectly pointed and six sided crystal looks and feels curiously smooth like cool ice. Yet it was neither carved nor polished, but discovered in 1975 in Arkansas, USA, in a small cave 65 feet below the surface of the earth, where it had been growing for 50 million years. The metal Avudayar base on which the Swayambhu Linga sits weighs 11,000 pounds, among the largest ever cast. It was December 1990 when a grand ceremony took place in Bangalore, India to inaugurate the carving of the first temple stone. The stone-cutting ceremony was presided over by His Holiness Swami Sivaratnapuri. 
affectionately known as Trichy Swami, and took place at his beautiful Kailasa Ashram. Following an elaborate puja at the ashram's Sri Nyanakchi Raja Rajeshwari temple, the goddess was paraded in a beautiful silver palanquin to an outer mandapam and placed before a large granite block to witness the carving of the first stone for Irivan temple. Then Gurudeva himself performed puja, pouring the sanctified milk and kumbha water over the granite stone. Next, Gurudeva gave Ganapati Stampuri a very special blessing as the project architect. And finally, at the auspicious moment of 1.08 p.m., Gurudeva made the long-awaited first blow to the stone. The process had now begun. The temple carving began with stones quarried in Karnataka, India, at an 11-acre worksite provided by Sri Balaganga Dharanatha Swami for 75 carvers and their families. No dynamite was used to harvest the stones. It was all removed by hand with chisels and hammers. Each block of stone was hand carved in India, crated and shipped to Kauai. A chisel will last only five minutes against the hard granite. Silpy blacksmiths using a coke-fed forge sharpened hundreds of chisels each day. These stones are uh, available in different colors, in different textures, in different uh, qualities. We have got a classification. We have observed all available stone on the earth and we have classified them under two, three categories. One is called male stone, another is called female stone, and third is called neutral stone or neuter stone. When we actually give a hammer stroke on the stone, if it produces a metallic sound, thick in sound, it is called a male stone. When the sound is shrill and also elongated and thin, that is called female stone. And uh, there is stone which either produces male sound or female sound, that is called a neuter. Between 1987 and 1991, Major landscaping, clearing, and pond building took place, and the path of the Saiba Satgurus was created. In 1995, the groundbreaking ceremony, or Panchasila Nyasa Puja, blessed the sacred land. At the height of that puja, precious metals and jewels were placed deep in the earth as a massive rainstorm blessed the monastery. After years of research and preparation, in August of 1999, the foundation of Erevan's temple was poured using high volume fly ash concrete. At the time, the lead engineer exclaimed, quote, this hasn't happened for 2000 years. It's historic. Not since the Greeks and Romans has such a massive placement of concrete been completed without a single crack. Unquote. Two years later, in 2001, with an elaborate ceremony, Satguru Sivaya Subramunya Swami and Ganapati Stavadi together placed the first stone on Irivan Temple's foundation. By July of 2003, the main sanctum was completed and the first pillars were erected by the Silpis from India. In August of 2004, a crane lifted the massive capstone into place atop the sanctum. In July 2005, a 
A special Garbanyasa rite was performed inside the Sanctum Sanctorum by the priests, Stabadis, and monks. Ganapati Stabadi said this was the second time in his life that he had done this ceremony, which is only done for temples made entirely of stone. Another set of artisans began work on the Dvajastamba flagpole. After carving the teakwood core, which was 45 feet long, intricate copper cladding adorned the structure, which arrived on Kauai in December of 2009. Periodically, Satguru Bodhinatha Valen Swami and the monks visited the Bengaluru India carving site. And while carving continued, a 10,000 pound pedestal for the Iravan crystal Sivadlinga deity was forged. Five metals were melted together in huge crucibles. The molten metal was carried and poured into underground wax molds. And after careful polishing and embellishment, a Chola-style base emerged. Carving of the stones of the Nandi Mandapam continued in 2017 with great energy. The Mandapam is like a small temple in front of the larger hall. It has the most elaborately carved stones of Erevan Temple. This is due to its smaller size, just 15 feet on a side, and to the carbon-tipped chisels that the team discovered in the 2010s. In 2017, after 27 years of carving, only the massive and mystically important perimeter wall remained. To provide the rough material for the 475-foot-long wall, 50 massive granite slabs were harvested. The wall is outside the temple proper, so not restricted to the founder's hand-carved edict. Stones were sliced into near-finished size using the worksite's giant circular stone saw. It took over 400 man days for each of the 50 sections of the wall to be carved. Each section consists of three pieces, the wall panel, a pillar, and decorative polished rose granite flower pot. During 2015 and 16, significant progress was made with the landscaping of the sacred gardens around the temple. Hundreds of special tissue culture plants were imported and put into the ground and dozens of black stepping stones were placed to create a hillside path. The first two of 50 elegant polished red granite pots also arrived. And in the fall of 2017, the Silpi carvers in Bengaluru finished the monumental task of carving all the stones for Erevan Temple. To honor the Silpis, the craftsmen of the temple, Holly Young, a talented sculptress living on the Big Island, completed the Silpi Pavilion bronzes. They were installed in the summer of 2018. The 13-foot-tall bronze murti of Lord Hanuman, holding Iravan in his uplifted hand, was installed soon afterwards near the Rudraksha forest grove that Gurudeva planted himself in 1978. Later that same year, four shipping containers of Iravan stones arrived from India. In March of 2018, a group of six shopis and a temple cook arrived from India. The seven-man team started on a two-year project to finish all the stone jointing activity for Iravan Temple, including the time-consuming perimeter wall. After that, a team of Kauai's master stone masons assembled the majestic black lava rock plinth, providing charming contrast with the white granite stone. At the same time, Monastery senior monks prepared content for the bronze panels, presenting the story of Iravan and the teachings of Saiva Siddhanta. The panels fit in carved frames in the perimeter wall, where pilgrims can peruse them while walking on a grass circumambulation path. Even though Iravan Temple was still under construction, 
Many came to the remote island on pilgrimage to personally experience the sanctity that was already present on San Marga and Derevan Temple. Such is the nature of a temple inspired by a divine vision. Around 2020, Selvanathan Stabadi, successor architect to Ganapati Stabadi, along with senior Sivacharya priests in India, informed us that it was time to install the crystal Sivalinga deity and begin daily pujas. Even if all the parts of the temple project, including the visitor infrastructure, were not yet finished. They said that after 30 years of carving and assembly, it was important to not delay any longer. Following their counsel, we began to quietly plan for a consecration ceremony on the auspicious dates of March 21 to 26, 2023. Due to insufficient guest facilities, we could not publicize the event for a larger audience. However, we took solace in being able to live stream it, which we'll include clips of in a moment. We also made plans to have another Kumbhava Shekham a few years later, when more increments of the complex would be finished so that more visitors could attend. Leading up to the March event, we had a small ceremony to place gems, precious metals, and other items under the five metal Sivalingam pedestal and officially lower it into its final position. The Crystal Sivalinga, after patiently waiting in Kadaval Temple for 36 years, was moved to the Yerevan Temple Sanctum. Shortly thereafter, Nandi, symbolizing Shiva's humble and ever-worshipful devotees, was installed in his home to face God Shiva and be greeted by countless pilgrims in the future. Finally, March 21 to 26 arrived for the consecration ceremonies of the Crystal Sivalinga. Of all the buildings on the island of Kauai that stand today, only Iravan Temple, Shiva's home in Hawaii, will still be standing a thousand years from now. A sacred and enduring monument to Gurudeva's profound vision and India's remarkable craftsmanship. Om Namah Shivaya. Help build the Erevan Temple and you're helping yourself and the generations that follow you. This magnificent edifice, home of Shiva, the only temple of its kind in the Western world.
on a sacred island, sacred to the Hawaiian people. None of us yet know the blessings that will come. To build a temple, we're all building this temple. It's the greatest thing one can do on earth. Is there any other great thing we can do but to build a house for God? People today are building homes for themselves, for their children. And for God and the gods all over the world. Hinduism is spread all over the world and God's homes are coming up and they're beautiful. The Irvan Temple made of stone is not a very large temple, but it's a very beautiful temple as you will see.